Today we'll look at how you can set up and use Blackboard Collaborate to enable you to give online lectures or online seminars. To begin you have to be in the module that you wish to create this for. So for this example I'm using my business and company law module. First of all you must make sure the edit mode is switched on here and in green. From here we then click across and choose the remote teaching tool. Once you've selected this you need to go down and find the live modules, webinars or streamed lectures heading and click on this. We will now enter this area called Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and this is where we can now set up our sessions, lectures, webinars, seminars. Let us now begin by creating a session. Once you've clicked the Create Session button, you're greeted with this side panel. First of all, we have to give the session a name. So for example, this could be Lecture 19, Lecture 18 on Data Protection. But for our purposes, because it's a test, I'm just going to call it the Test. What you then need to do is go into the Event Details tab. Here, you need to set the date and time for the lecture. This should mirror up to what the date and time of a lecture would be if it was a traditional lecture. For our purposes, I'll leave it open now because I want to run it as a test. What you will see has happened as well is it's created a link here for us, which is called the guest link. This is a link that we will share with any of the participants. It's selected the guest role as a participant, and for students entering, I would leave them as participants. But if you were doing this with um, another module organiser, so there was going to be two of you presenting, you would obviously change that role. As we come down here, you can see the settings that are open. What I typically do is uh, leave this as the early entry of 15 minutes, so students come in, can come in before the session starts. And if you want, you can provide a brief description of what will be covered in the session. If you then go down to the session settings, this is where you can adjust specific parts. As you'll see again, the default attendee role is participant. From here, you then need to choose your options. As this will be a lecture, um, I'm not going to allow participants to share their audio and video uh, because if they were to all be able to share that, that would slow the lecture down and also mean there might be noise with their microphones being shared. I'm also going to, for these, this test, just stop them from drawing on the whiteboard. And then for private chats, I'll select those so that um, they can only chat with the moderators and that all private chats are supervised. And then I just save the settings here. And what we have now done is as simple as that to create the actual lecture or webinar. Now I will show you how you can actually use the system. So if we click on the test system and we can join the session. And when we enter the session for the first time, we're greeted with this screen. And this is the same screen students will get. Because I've used this before, I didn't get a couple of pop-up notifications which are asked for access to my microphone and my webcam. Um, you will likely get these and you need to allow this. On the left hand side you'll see you're greeted with a little tab up here and if you click on this you'll find it allows you to start recording the session if you want to record the session, look at the privacy policy, report any issues and also when it comes to leaving the session that option is selected down the bottom. Minimise that again so we're back to the main screen. Down the bottom you'll have your status and settings. You'll have the options here for sharing your audio and video so you can click these to set these on. At the moment they are selected as off but when they select on, as you'll see, it will go green. And that means I'm now sharing my audio with any of the participants. Likewise for the camera, and this is where you can raise your hand. So if a student has a problem, they can click this to raise their hand. Now if we move over to the far right, what you'll see is we've got the Collaborate panel. If we click this to open it up, what you'll see is you've got four options here. The first of these is Chat. Now here, this allows you to chat with the students. If you had other moderators in here, so other people running the session with you, you could also have a private chat with them. You can find someone specific to chat with, but if you wanted to send a message to all of the students, you would just click on this, and then you can type what you want to say to the students here. And this would then be delivered to all of the students, and they could respond. The second panel is the attendees, so this allows us to see a list of the people that are attending the session. So at the moment there is only myself, but when you have students attend, they will have all of their names here. Uh, when you deliver the notification to the students to join the session, I ask the students to sign in with their name. That way I can have a register of who's attending and know who's here. We'll skip this setting uh, for a minute because this is about how you share content. I'll just show you how to change some other settings if you needed to. 
This end tab is the My Settings tab, and it allows you to adjust things on the fly as needed. So for example, in the session settings, say that we wanted to now allow the students to share some of their audio or video or draw on the whiteboard, we could choose that option from here and it would make it live for the students. And that doesn't mean that when we click this option, for example, for sharing video, that the students will automatically share video, they would have to then go down to the bottom and tick to say they're willing to share their video camera feed. To look at the last settings that you have is the share settings. So this is where you can share content with the students and they will see this on the main browser where we can see the welcome sign at the moment. If you share the blank whiteboard here, it will give you a blank whiteboard which allows you to write notes as you would in a lecture for the students to see on the board. If you've ticked the box in the settings, students can also write on this board as well. And the students will see this, so for example, we can type in here, and the students would see that along with the standard functions of being able to draw. And if you click this, that allows you to stop sharing it. Here what we can also do if we wanted to is we can break out the students in groups. So if we were running this session as more of a seminar, we can click on this and then we can assign students to different groups through here. Going back to sharing an application or screen, this is how we would then share our slides. So we click on this and then it gives you the options of what you'd like to share. You can share your entire screen, which means they will see absolutely everything you see. Bear in mind if you do this, that if you have any notifications or anything else popping up or you have any emails, the students will also be able to see these. I would recommend you choose the application window, which allows you to choose which program you'd like to share. From here, you can see that I can select my slides and I can choose to share that. And then by sharing that, you'll see that is what the students will now see. Um, you can make your slides full screen and then the students would see all of the slides full screen in that back bit. I've just uh, done this so you can see it kind of going live behind, but this is the scene that the students would also see. Once you're finished, you can click the stop sharing and it'll stop sharing that screen again and the students will go back to the main screen. When you wish to leave the session, you just click here and leave the session and you'll be greeted with a question about how good the audio and video was. Uh, when using a browser, it's actually best to use Google Chrome. I've tried using various other browsers and I find that with Safari, for example, it will work, but you won't be able to share a specific application screen. You can only share your whole monitoring system. I hope this helps guide you through how to use Blackboard Collaborate.